Welcome to the next episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire. On this episode, I'm taking you on a introduction to panoramic photography. Check it out. Alright, before I begin, uh, I just want to talk, or, you know, put a bit of a disclaimer out there. You don't need all these tools to take a pano shot. Yes, you can take shots um, just with your normal ball heads, just panning them around. However, the tools and equipment that I'm going to talk about will certainly help with any misaligned images. It's going to help with um, leveling the tripod. And it's also going to make sure that um, you know any software that you're using will align them a lot better. So uh, I guess that's. Uh, I just want to preface this video with that. Um, let's talk about the equipment. So in this video, you're going to see me using some equipment. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the L plate. Now the L plate I'm using in this video is a three-legged thing. Um, I'm not using that one anymore. I'm using a really right stuff. 5D Mark IV specific um, L bracket. Now this will actually help you easily orientated to portrait or landscape. Um, I find them really useful. Now you mix that in and combine that with a nodal rail or a slide and you suddenly are able to move it back and forth. Now the whole reason why you need a nodal rail or slide is to make sure that you can get or find your par no parallax point. Now without going too technical let's just say that the goal of doing this is to actually have your um, you know your camera center so it's moving on the same axes and that way no foreground or background images move or you know appear to move when you're actually um, twisting and panning the camera so uh, that's the basics of it I'm not going to get too technical about the nodal point or no parallax point um, that's uh, you know there's a lot of science behind it and uh, I'm not someone to talk about that. I like to try to make it nice and easy for you to understand and the real goal is to get your camera on top of your tripod so that no objects in your image are moving at all. That's the goal and that's why you need the nodal rail, the L bracket and also using a leveling base. Now this tool you don't really need a leveling base but I find having a leveling base um, it means you don't actually have to uh, change the all three legs of your tripod trying to get the tripod nice and level so get a leveling base it's going to make sure it's nice and horizontal and level and then that way it's going to save you a lot of time but also making sure that it's going to have a nice beautiful horizon um, when you do stitch them together now yes you know software like Lightroom and other um, software nowadays you can certainly straighten all these things out but you want to maximize your image size you want to maximize everything there so you don't have to crop it in as much so that's what I recommend and lastly make sure you invest in a good tripod so if you're doing longer exposures make sure you've got something that's nice and sturdy you don't want to have anything um, that might move at all so you don't want to make sure you know you spend all this time and all this equipment making sure that all those other tools are there to help you um, align the images. The last thing you need is your tripod moving or shaking and giving you blurry images. So get a sturdy tripod, find one that fits in your budget. You don't need to use the same sort of equipment I use. I'm currently using a Gitzo Systematic 4 Series tripod with a Systematic uh, I think three, uh, 2, 3 and 4 leveling base and then on top of that I've got some of the cheaper options being the Sunway Photo um, panning locking mechanism which is it does 360 degrees and then again the Sunway photo uh, nodal rail now it's a smaller nodal rail it's not something for a long long lens um, but that's something that you could look into in the future again it just comes down to budget I don't shoot panoramas every single day but I like to shoot them when I'm out and about or traveling so this is why I've got a, a more affordable option in the nodal rail and slides there you can also get multi-row pano, uh, multi-rail, multi-row rails, and that way you can do like two, three, or even four um, pano shots 
in different rows. We're not going to talk about that today. That's going to be left for an advanced pano um, tutorial. So, uh, now you know all the equipment. Let's check out this episode. Now, uh, this was taken about two years ago in Western Australia, right near Ningaloo Reef. It's a uh, Yardi Creek, and it actually flows down this gorge all the way down through to the Indian Ocean. It's really beautiful, very picturesque, and it's probably some of the best water I've ever swam in. Um, swimming with the whale sharks and just the, the crystal clear qualities of the water in this region are absolutely beautiful. So if you ever get a chance, go check it out. Um, enjoy this episode, and I'll chat to you at the end. <laughs> We're here at Yardi Creek, Western Australia. Just doing a couple uh, 270 degree panoramas. Um, basically, what we're using today is the Gitzo tripod. So it's a carbon fiber tripod. And I've put that with a panoramic head. Uh, the panoramic head just allows me to easily uh, um, adjust 15 degree increments, or 30 degree, 45 or 90 degree increments. Um, and also an L plate to try to capture a, a wider perspective. Um, today we've also got the, uh, the, the leveling base as well, which just helps me get it uh, horizontal, makes for an easier stitch. And then the pano head, you can actually zoom it back and forth to get the, uh, the nodal point of the lens. That will help you stitch it together. Um, later in post-production. So uh, as I go through, sort of line it up where you want to start and then you take a shot, move, it clicks into place, take a shot, move, it clicks in, take a shot. So it's that simple, you just pretty much repeat that process all the way around. Uh, you can do 360, 270, 180 degree panos, makes it pretty easy. Got a pretty spectacular view today. Uh, makes my job easy. Only problem with this is it does take a little bit longer, especially if you start mixing it up with slow shutter speed. So today, my settings. I'm on hundredth of a second, f16, and ISO 100. So I've chosen f16 because it's quite bright and I don't have any filters on. When you're stitching panoramas together. Um, especially in bright sun, it can actually cause some funny effects in the skyline. So no filters today. Um, using F16, that will give you a greater depth of field. So with portraits, you'd use something like F2.8. Um, around F8, it starts to get a better depth of field, depending on your lens, of course. Um, and then from there, it just you know, hopefully get maximise your range of clarity. Um, shutter speed, I'm using a fairly quick shutter speed because it is bright outside today. I just want to try to make the process of capturing a panoramic uh, a lot quicker. Um, and ISO 100, so again it's really bright outside today. So using a very low ISO sensitivity helps for me to uh, have all those other settings. That's pretty much it. Alright, thanks for watching this episode guys, uh, make sure if you want to see more of these you subscribe and hit that like button. Also if you can do me a favour, comment below, I really would like to know um, any feedback or perhaps you want to got some questions and something that I can address in future episodes for you, so certainly uh, comment below and I'll, I'll um, do that for you. Uh, my name's John Wright and this has been another episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire and I'll see you on episode three. Cheers. Uh, well, it will <laughs> cut. <laughs> uh, the reason why I don't have filters on. There's an animal in there.
It's a wallaby. Get you. Ah, fucking spiky things. Zoom up. Oh! <gasps>